Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. So in the previous video, we saw a little bit about the basics of utilizing SAP UI5 as a service broker inside the XSA environment. Now we want to move on to another sort of basic topic, but one that I want to cover before we get into, say, consuming OData services and calling uh, RESTful services and things like that. It's the topic of text bundles uh, or language uh, independent text strings, translation of the user interface. Um, now, maybe you think that this is this is odd uh, that, that, uh, to start here, uh, but I'll give you a little background. I used to work at, um, at a customer that was implementing SAP ERP, and uh, we were a multinational corporation. We operated in multiple countries, so everything we did had to be translate, uh, translatable into multiple languages. So I learned really early on how important it was not to hard code text strings, not to hard code UI elements. And I guess that's stuck with me over the years. So I find this to be a really important topic. Maybe where you work, it isn't. Maybe you do single language um, user interfaces, in which case, you know, feel free to hard code your UI elements, but you never know when that might change and you might need to translate them. And, um, so this is this video is for you if uh, if you feel that you need to or want to know how to uh, you know better maintain the the text elements of your user interface independent of um, independent of the application itself and this goes hand in hand with the earlier video that we did on text bundles where we saw how we could create language independent text strings in the database um, for our uh, descriptions or columns in the database, how we could do text joins, how we could have translatable text for our error messages and, and other texts that come from the application server layer, even how we can do translations of the metadata in our OData services using the new core data and services capabilities as well. But let's see how we can properly use the same concept of text bundles within SAP UI5. So let's go back over to our project and uh, let's go ahead and create a new folder in our resources uh, for all of our text bundles we'll call this i18n and inside here we'll create a new file called message bundle dot properties and we'll keep this real simple for now at least translate our text key will be hello world equals hello world translated okay very simple and actually let's go back to our index html where we have this hard-coded hello world and uh, let's let's change this and instead, let's load this from the text bundle. So uh, one of the first things we have to do, we use a jQuery library and then an SAP subset of that to require uh, a library here, jQuery.sap.resources. And then we'll create a variable for our locale and we'll get that from SAP UI get core, get configuration, get language. So that will get our locale from the client side. And now we can create a bundle object. Our bundle equals SAP resources and our URL be relative i18n message bundle properties. So the file that we just created in the previous step in this folder, relative path to it. And then we tell it what locale we want. That'll be our variable s locale. Okay. 
That's pretty straightforward. That'll load the text bundle into this variable, O bundle. And it, of course, load the one for whatever locale we have. Right now, we only have uh, a message bundle, so we only have an English one. Uh, but you'll see how we can, uh, we can translate that in a minute. But we want to get rid of this hard-coded text. So instead of the set text to a hard-coded hello world, we'll just say O bundle dot get text. And we'll pass it the key. World. There we go. And let's go ahead and run this to pick up the change. And already, oh, something did not go right. Hello. Oh, I said hello word. So what you see here is if your text uh, key that you give it doesn't match up to a value in a text bundle, because here I correctly said hello world. And the text key that I requested was hello word. So it falls back and just displays the key for you. So not a horrible mistake to make because it uh, shows you what happens when you don't have a matching resource. Um, but we'll change that. We'll correct that. And we'll rerun it. And now it pulled correctly. So we no longer see our hard-coded hello world. We no longer see the key itself. But now we see hello world translated. All right, now let's see how we can actually go about translating this text. So let's take a copy of our message bundle file. And it paste. And just like we did in the earlier exercise, we'll just add the language key on the end here, message bundle underscore DE. Say OK. And we'll come here and we'll change this to German. And I will say I am not a German speaker. So if this is a bad translation, I apologize. I probably went to uh, Google Translate and had it to translate Hello World for me. Uh, but now we see we have the English, we have the German. And if we rerun our service module pick up that change still shows us the English but now once again if I come in here and I change my browser settings and I look for language just like we did earlier oh I left it Afrikaans from the earlier exercise that's interesting uh, which of course it never finds and then it falls back to English uh, but let's take German and let's move that to the top and now we come here and we hit refresh and now we see our German translation. So without a bunch of if checks and the code, we don't even really have to have any coding to process it. It's really just the name of the text bundle and the SAP supplied resource library really does all the hard work for us of, of loading uh, that, uh, that, that library. And what we can see here, what, what might be interesting, let me show you in the developer tools. Let me refresh this. Um, so you see it loading, um, uh, you see it loading message bundle DE there. Let's, uh, uh, there's my message bundle. Uh, sometimes though, what you'll see is SAP UI5 will, uh, just request different message bundles. We'll maybe see that with one of the other application. Let me load one of my other ones, exercise chat. Well, these are all loading the underscore EN, um, particularly on perhaps a mostly older version of SAP UI5. It might have looked for a more exact match, like it might have tried to load EN, and then if it found EN, it would do EN-US. Um, but I think, oh, actually, let me, let me do change my settings back here to English and see if I can get it, because it's English United States. Now let me refresh. No. 
still not getting it. it, it like I said, uh, perhaps older releases. But basically, you know, some people come in here to troubleshoot, and, and I wanted to point this out at this point, although the UI5 libraries are a bit smarter now than maybe they were in older releases. Um, never be alarmed, if, particularly if you see a message bundle, a properties file, or something like that, if it ended in red. Sometimes SAP UI5 is simply uh, like probing the server to see if it has specific translations, um, maybe uh, maybe more specific versions of, of things. Um, for instance, actually let me let me try one more thing here. You notice we don't have a Japanese version. Let's let's change our settings here to to Japanese. And now let me actually go back to my uh, hello world here. Yeah. So what you what you see here is it's trying to probe. I I told it to load Japanese by changing my browser settings. So it tried to probe to see if there was a message bundle uh, for for Japan, and then it didn't find that. And it tried a message bundle English because that's its fallback language. It actually didn't find that. So then it tries just message bundle with no. Uh, language key in it and then it finds the one that I maintained for English and um, you know when you're troubleshooting sometimes you come into the uh, the browser tools and you see these ones in red really don't be alarmed if you see the properties files uh, like this uh, you know as I said it's SAP UI 5 on the client side it's its way of probing the server to see if it has something available, see if it has a particular language uh, available, a particular feature sometimes. It'll look for a, a certain JavaScript library. This way we don't have to build like services that are, you know, have a lot of logic on the server side. That's why SAP UI 5 is a completely client side framework. It's able to simply just probed if a feature exists by seeing if the file um, or, or the library exists and, and can be served out. And if it gets a bad HTTP response from the server, it knows that feature uh, isn't there. It knows that language version isn't there. And then it continues with its logical processing. Like in this case, it falls back from Japanese and tries to load the English. It's not something that we have to code in. It's actually a very nice feature of the way that SAP UI5 in general works, the way it loads resources. Um, it allows for very robust kind of probing of the features on the server, the, the UI5 version that's available from the server, without any complicated server-side processing to support that. So I know it was a little bit of a tangent there at the end, and, and I uh, and it didn't demonstrate at first the way I wanted it, but hopefully that got my point across. Uh, but most importantly, to take away, if nothing else, is just how simple it is to set up um, language-independent strings so that we aren't having to hard code everything in the user interface. Now, that said, some of the subsequent exercises, simply for the simplicity of learning, we're not going to set up a lot of external text bundles. We, we probably will go ahead with some hard coding in the UI. That just keeps the exercise a little smaller, a little more compact. But part of the reason to cover this topic first before we go into those exercises is to stress how important it is in a real application to, to utilize these text bundles and, and have a translatable user interface.